I'm Richard Coulter, head of the Fujitsu Network Business Marketing Team, and I'm here with Rod Nathan, CTO and head of the Photonic System Business Unit. Rod was recently featured in an Optical Connections Magazine article where he discussed long-haul networks and sustainability, and we thought we'd bring him in here to share a little bit more about his thoughts on these two important topics. Welcome, Rod. Thanks, Rich. Look forward to the conversation. Let's start a little bit with the long haul network and some of the, the trends that you talked about in the article, specifically you know, what's happening in the long haul market environment, what's driving the growth, and what's driving new network builds. Sure. There's a few things. One is, you know, I think the, the industry goes through cycles of investments between you know, the access and metro parts of the network to the long haul parts of the network. So we're in a situation right now where we see a cycle favoring the growth in long haul networks. And it's really because, you know, many of those infrastructures that are there today were installed, you know, up to 10 years and even longer ago. So it's time for a refresh. You know, time that with an increasing bandwidth, which is driven by a couple of things. One is the change geographically that's been driven by the remote work as a result of, of COVID and how that's changed the, the uh, dynamics of where the bandwidth has to grow. And, and then of course, 5G is driving a lot of bandwidth into the network. Enterprise uh, drives a lot of bandwidth, but the whole new wave of um, technologies rolling out in the Metro for 5G is driving bandwidth also into the long haul network. So I think the bandwidth's increasing. We've got some older investments that need to be refreshed. And then you've got the timing of new technologies that are coming online which uh, really make it the right time to invest in that long haul network. Yeah, great. Let's, let's dive into those technologies actually. Sure. So maybe you can tell us about you know, some of the new technologies coming online that are helping to evolve the long haul network and, and why those technologies are helping to drive new deployments. Sure. So uh, of course there's, there's uh, several ways that you can increase the, the bandwidth in the network. And, and one of the key metrics we look for is the dollars per bit per kilometer. So you can increase this by uh, increasing the bit rate of a, the unit of transport in a long haul network, which is a wavelength. You can increase the unit of bit rate by increasing the speed with which you transmit data. So we're now advancing towards 1.2 terabit per wavelength and in the future, near future, 1.6 terabit in addition to that. Uh, that's per wavelength. There's then technologies that help it go further at those higher bit rates. So there's been traditionally built into long haul networks, something called reverse Raman, which improves the gain. Uh, now we're able to introduce uniquely forward Raman as well. So, and combine forward Raman with reverse Raman to get even further reach uh, out of that same, uh, same wavelength. So these are some of the key technologies, you know, and then the, the other axis upon which you can uh, improve this metric is by increasing the spectrum available on the fiber. So the number of wavelengths that you actually can use, uh, effectively use on that fiber. So we're doing that by doing C plus L bands. If you're familiar, C band is what's traditionally been used. We're now adding to that a, a whole nother band of spectrum called the L band. So C plus L is being used on those fibers to nearly double the capacity of wavelengths on a fiber in the long haul network. Yeah, great. Thanks. I, I know C plus L has been around for some time. Actually, I, you know this, but <laughs> I deployed a C plus L system in 2000 um, and it was 1.76 terabits at that time, the whole system. But what's new about this new system with C plus L? What, yeah. what is it really changing that, that's ch kind of changing and driving new deployments and why is it interesting now? Well, first of all, uh, the bandwidth requirements have grown a lot since then. So making it the, the, the demand higher for that type of expanded spectrum. The second is the level of integration. You know, in the past you had literally two systems. You had an L-band L system and a C-band system and you multiplex them together uh, before they went out on the fiber. Now these look like highly integrated systems. The rotoms are, are managing both, wave, both bands at with one set of equipment um, and the transponders tune across 
all of those wavelengths. So it's the level of integrate. It's now become practical with the technology, uh, if I may, from what we did as, <laughs> as uh, projects in the past. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think another big thing with that integration, you know, it's continuous because yes. you have that integration, your continuous C plus L. Right. You and tune from of, here to there. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's a huge difference in, in just the complexity of how you deploy that, that network as well. So kind of moving on to, to the next question. Um, we just launched uh, the ultra optical system recently, and I hope you could give us a little bit of overview of you kind of what's that system, what's new about it, um, how it fits in the Onefinity portfolio, sure. uh, and kind of how you see that um, kind of changing the, the portfolio itself. Sure. So the, the current Onefinity system is highly, is very successful. It's being deployed uh, by hundreds of customers. And um, it's going to be here for a long time. It's, it's optimized, really, for the metro portions of the network. We're evolving that architecture uh, to add to it a, high, a much more highly integrated version for the long haul network. We're adding to it, uh, as I mentioned, the higher bit rate transmission, the 1.2 terabit, eventually going to 1.6 terabit transmission per wavelength. Um, and we're adding to it more degrees. We're adding to it much higher levels of integration. So in the line system itself, uh, as we talked about, it's able to switch across uh, C plus L and the transponders to tune across C plus L in a seamless way. Um, adding uh, optical OTDR, which is, think of it like an optical test set to characterize each uh, wavelength of a fiber and characterize the fiber um, before you even turn up in situ uh, in the system. We're adding to it in pseudo waves. So the ability to measure the connectivity across um, each of the fiber connections that you make in a system, these are highly complex systems. And then looking at it from the operational side and the simplification side, uh, we are doing something we call the, uh, the smart fiber connectivity which uh, dramatically innovates on the complexity of what would have been the fiber shuffle in traditional systems and can on a on a system that's you know say 8 to 16 degrees it can reduce up to over 90 percent of the connectivity that the operator needs to deal with when setting up and configuring these systems that has a dramatic improvement in the um, reduction of error opportunities by operators as they work with these systems. And then on top of all that, very important to this, to this new architecture is the software. The software is innovating on uh, using machine learning algorithms to help understand and characterize the network and route traffic across the network. Zero touch provisioning features to ease the turn up uh, so you're not having to go and, and operator touch each and every node in the network. Um, these are really key things, but importantly, for that software, the hardware has access to a lot more data, a lot more characterization and understanding of the underlying fiber network, and pulling that up and aggregating that for the software systems to be able to use. Yeah, fantastic. So are there key similarities with the Metro version of the Onefinity uh, and the long haul? Oh, there sure are. I mean, they're still disaggregated from a transponder point of view. The line system is more integrated for the long haul system. Um, they're, they are interoperable. So the existing Onefinity system is going to be around for a long, long time and still has a robust roadmap. This then integrates with that seamlessly from uh, an interoperability perspective. Of course, the software system stretches from Metro to through to long haul network. Uh, so these are some of the, the key ways that they coexist and actually enhance each other. It's one doesn't replace the other. They they seamlessly work together to extend the reach of the Onefinity systems in the network. Right, and that that's huge for a lot of carriers that right. that have both in their network or yeah. I mean, there's big network. investments existing. Yeah, we talked about that. One of the big benefits of, of the long haul network is improving price per bit per kilometer. At the same time, it helps to address the increasing need for network capacity. You know, so these two challenges are, are really critical for carriers. Um, and hope you could share a little bit about how Ultra Optical System is, is designed for those challenges yeah. and helping meet those, those challenges for the sure. customers. So for, 
the first part, which is the cost per bit per kilometer, um, that means more bits per unit of infrastructure, which is a wavelength. Um, and it means going longer distance. So to address the cost per bit, we are doing more integration for at higher rates. So the, the 135 gigabaud um, transponder that will is part of the solution is also then going to evolve to 1.6 terabits in another in a follow-on release. Um, so that's the fastest in the industry in terms of the bandwidth per um, wavelength. And then there's forward Raman technology combined with reverse or backwards Raman techno technology, which gives us more distance at those higher bit rates. So that means less regenerators required and reducing the cost per bit to go that the maximum kilometers. So that's one on the cost per bit per kilometer. The other thing was the capacity of the network. And there's a couple of key technologies there. Um, increasing the actual spectrum available on the fiber for those wavelengths. So in other words, in the, instead of having a, a small number of wavelengths, almost doubling the number of wavelengths available on that fiber by doing C plus L band. Most of our long haul transmission today is in the C band, but this is using the C plus the L band continuously across the fiber. So that's the way we're increasing the capacity. The other way to look at capacity is the, the amount of connections you can hub together in one particular location and increasing the number of degrees with the latest switching technology is a, is a key aspect of that for us too. So long haul networks kind of fundamentally at their core are complex. Um, kind of from a nationwide network connecting multiple sites you know, kind of at every phase of that deployment and operation, there, there are challenges and complexities. But, and I think you talked about this earlier, how when designing the system, this was one of the key things that, that your team thought about how to address and, and worked with customers on. I hope you could talk about how the system was kind of designed to help tame that complexity at every stage of deployment. Yeah. So, uh, you know, starting with the very beginning stage of deployment is the, uh, number of parts uh, that you have to consider. And so we've maximized the integration. So things like uh, OTDR technology to measure the fibers, um, get completely uh, characterized fibers in, in situ in the network, uh, having two of those integrated into the system, having uh, pseudo waves that um, generate uh, communications across that fiber so that we can understand what's happening with the connectivity of each fiber in the systems and across the network. They're self-identifying, if you will. Um, and also using intelligent or smart uh, fiber connectivity in the configuration of the system, often called the fiber shuffle, um, that has been radically simplified in our, in our latest architecture. In fact, um, I'll give you an example, like in an eight to 16 degree system, you can see over a reduction of about 90% of the front facing fiber connectivity that an, an operator needs to configure before they deploy their system. And you know, you can pre-configure in a lab and make that simpler that way by putting the labor in up front. But then um, what is it over, I've, I've read that over half of the outages in a traditional network occur by human error. Um, and if you think about the evolution of that network and where you do an add or a change in the future and you're faced with, you know, 90% more connectivity <laughs> to deal with on the faceplate, that's a very complex situation for, for the craftsman that goes out there. Um, if you can reduce that in the way that we have, you can reduce the number of errors, you can really simplify that. Um, and again, then putting those self-identifying connectivity in, in, into the, the system to tell the crass person or tell the operator when they plug something into the wrong place. So these are a couple of the key aspects. You know, on an ongoing basis, the software plays a big role um, in the software and how, it, how the interfaces work, how it manages, how it autonomously sets up, does the zero touch provisioning, uh, these kinds of aspects of, uh, of the software systems. Fantastic. I'm going to shift 
topics on you again really quickly and, okay. and talk a little bit more about sustainability. So sustainability yeah. has been a, a trend that we've been hearing from analysts in the press. Um, we know a lot of key customer segments, uh, really across our customer segments, have key initiatives related to sustainability. Um, it's a huge pain point that you talked about earlier on. Can you explain how the ultra optical system is designed to help address this key issue um, and, and help deliver new sustainability for customers? So sustainability is actually uh, at, the, at the heart of the, of the Fujitsu way. It's really what we're driven and it's in our purpose. It's what we are, are here to, to provide is technology that, that innovates on, on uh, sustainability and trust in society. And so uh, for us, that's really a really core issue and into these optical systems, uh, they play a big role in sustainability. So uh, for example, uh, we are dramatically reducing the power consumption uh, by using the, the absolute latest geometries in our industry in terms of the integration in the devices. Uh, we're adding intelligent algorithms that scale linearly rather than uh, non-linearly as you increase the bandwidth or increase the gain in your system. Uh, these are a couple of key innovations. You know, the other is um, um, there's a lot of heat being generated in these systems. And we will be the first to commercialize a closed loop liquid cooling system to I'd be able to localize where that heat is generated and optimize the evacuation of that heat through the system using liquid cooling. And you know, that may sound like uh, a science project, a science fair project, but it's something we've commercialized at Fujitsu in the Fugaku um, supercomputer systems for many years. So there's a lot of history uh, with this technology, proving it out, making uh, innovations like dripless connectors. So from an uh, operator's point of view, the system is completely similar to what they're already used to. They can insert card, remove cards. The, the liquid cooling connectors work just like an electrical connector in that regard. Um, and, um, and then we have, as a result, less uh, fan wear out. So the fans should be more reliable because they're running at a lower speed. They're, they're pulling uh, the heat out more efficiently than the air-cooled systems. So lower noise in the central office, which if you've been in one, that's gonna be really important. We're able to dramatically reduce the speed of the fans, which reduces the power consumption, reduces the, the noise in the environment. So these are all key aspects of sustainability uh, that we're building into this system. Fantastic. All right, thank you, Rod, so much for your time today. We really appreciate you joining us and, and talking us through what your views on the long haul market and, and sustainability. Thanks, Rich. I'm, I'm really excited about the new technology coming out and, and I also know our customers are. So that's what, that's what gets me up in the morning is to be able to serve them with the latest innovations possible. Yeah, this is a really exciting time uh, with the launch of the ultra optical system. It's bringing new technologies to market that are enhancing sustainability, new levels of performance and new levels of cost per bit per kilometer. It's a really exciting time.